Zelensky recently described Putin's denazification of Ukraine as laughable, and the brainwashed flock of the mainstream media certainly must agree. They have been told that Nazis wave the American flag and vote Republican, and the brainwashed flock always believe what they are told. But those of us still cleaving to our sanity remember that Nazis were members of Hitler's National Socialist Party from the 1930s and 40s. And not only were there thousands of Nazis in Western Ukraine back then, it is still a big part of their national pride. Nazi war criminal Stepan Bandera is a national hero, and there are actual Nazi organizations still thriving in Ukraine, including the Azov Regiment, which is now a part of Ukraine's armed forces. The Nazification of Ukraine is well documented and easily verified, as is the Nazification of America. During the 1930s, there were many notable Americans who supported the Nazis, such as Prescott Bush, Henry Ford, and Fred Koch, banks such as J.P. Morgan and Chase Manhattan, companies such as General Motors, Standard Oil, Shell, and IBM. Major General Smedley Butler of the U.S. Marines was asked by these powerful entities to help them install National Socialism in the United States. I appeared before the Congressional Committee, the highest representation of the American people under subpoena to tell what I knew of activities, which I believe might lead to an attempt to set up a fascist dictatorship. I was supposed to lead an organization of 500,000 men, which would be able to take over the functions of government. And when that plan failed, war broke out in Europe with the support of the banks and these American corporate entities. After World War II, only about a dozen were brought to justice at the Nuremberg trials. The Catholic Church and the Vatican helped thousands of Nazis evade capture via the rat lines, which brought them mostly to South America, where they built an entire town in Argentina. In Operation Paperclip, the United States secretly absorbed thousands of Nazis into the U.S. government, where they led the NASA space program and helped pioneer the military-industrial complex as well as Big Pharma. Many believe that being a Nazi is synonymous with being anti-Jewish, which may have been true in 1930s Germany, but it's complicated. Many high-ranking Nazis themselves, including Adolf Hitler, were Ashkenazi Jews, who can be traced back to the notorious Khazars, who mysteriously mass-converted to Judaism about 1,300 years ago in the region now known as Ukraine. Ashkenazi Jews ran the political Zionist movement in Germany, and for several years, the Zionists were the only political party allowed to operate inside Germany by the Nazis. Both the Zionists and the Nazis wanted their own ethnically pure state, and for years before their final solution, the Nazis helped the Zionists in their efforts to establish the state of Israel within Palestine. It was far more complicated than mere racial hatred. Nazism can best be described as fascism, and fascism is godlessness. The word Nazi is a made-up slur, but the word fascist can be clearly defined. It stems from the Latin word fasces, which is a bundle of sticks banded together to form a deadly weapon an old-school meme that represents the deadly power of an organized mob, a gang. When men lack a personal relationship with God, they inevitably band together out of fear. Submitting to the strong man for a small taste of dominance, they become just another beast in the jungle. And today, we can clearly see this fascist mentality in all of these godless groups. The woke, the Satanists, the transhumanists, and the genocidal mass murderers of the Great Reset are all merging together into one giant Foskies. Godless men and women banded together out of fear. Fascists serving the strong man. Spiritually speaking, these are the weakest among us. And so far, we are allowing them to destroy everything.